the Woody on National Signing Day, but there were a lot of other questions that Ohio State coach Ryan Day got from us here at Buckeye Talk and from the rest of the beat, Nathan Baird, Doug Lamerys, Stephen Means. One of the things that we wanted to ask him about was his new defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles. Ryan Day did not want to get into a lot of talk about that. He said there's going to be a formal introduction later, but he did give us a little bit of insight. Doug, I guess just what jumped out at you as to what Ryan Day said about why Jim Knowles so broadly fit what he was looking for in a defensive coordinator. So Ryan Day was saying how Ohio State had basically evolved into a 4-2-5 defense, two linebackers, five safeties, and that that's what Jim Knowles runs. And he was talking about, as much as we talked about sort of this jack stand-up end that Knowles uses that makes it kind of look like a three-man front at times. Ryan Day did call it a four-man front. I mean, it still kind of is two ends and two tackles. So, And that that structure w will be familiar. And he he didn't say that they are going to recruit any differently to the defensive positions, to the defensive body types that they need in this defense. Obviously, Jim Knowles, when he gets here on January 2nd, will have more influence in that kind of thing. But it's not a sea change in Ryan Day. So there's, I think, a lot of familiarity with how they want to go about things. But um, I just I thought it was, there was an interesting discussion, just sort of like some of the logistics of this, inc including the idea that Ryan Day said he has talked to all the assistants kind of about what might happen in a world where Jim Knowles is going to take at least one person's job. And so, but, but Ryan Day really wanted to keep it on the Rose Bowl right now where they're trying to win that game, and Knowles will get here in January. The one thing that Ryan Day was kind of open to talking about was how Jim Knowles fits in personnel-wise at Ohio State, uh, with the personnel on the field, the players, and whether there was any shift that had to happen in recruiting. And Stephen, his answer there basically was no. Like, there isn't really a big structural difference between what Jim Knowles will want to do and what Ohio State has the personnel to do. Yeah, I think, I don't know if it changes the right word, but his biggest influence will just be on the numbers. And they started listing off how many guys he wants in different positions, and then Doug basically made him run down every single position, which was awesome, by the way. It was like eight cornerbacks, eight defensive tackles, like six defensive ends, something like that. I texted it out, so get the text. Uh, that's where you're going to see it show up, and you're going. I think the change will just be, and they're already kind of doing it. It's just okay. How many wide res How many defensive ends do you offer in a class? How many defensive tackles do you offer in a class? How many linebackers? How many defensive backs? What kind of defensive backs? Are the corners still anywhere from five ten to six foot one ninety to two hundred? Probably because bad coverage. What are the safeties? Do you need a guy who's six three? Do you need another guy who's six one? And another guy who, like stuff like that will probably change. But that changes all the time, just depending on what the scheme is and what might be out there. But that's more what will change more than just okay. Now we're gonna look for you know this type of scheme fit guy. No, it's gonna be the same type of players. They just meet maybe different numbers now that they're very clearly admitting that they're running a four two five defense, which we all knew last year. Doug, as he was running through those numbers, the one that maybe jumped out to me as maybe the most fluid, the, the conversations that he and Knowles are having are between, what do you say, like four bullets and then like seven safeties? And like what do you call each guy and where do you maybe tweak the numbers almost between those two positions specifically? Yeah, I think they're just going to fold bullet into the safeties, right, when they think about that 4-2-5. That, that's going to be two corners and three safeties. And most teams are evolving to that point, and I think it's become clear here. Ohio State, in the end, is going to really look for sort of two true deep safeties, and then there's going to be a hybrid. And that hybrid, they're going to have a small hybrid and a big hybrid. Ryan Day kind of even talked about that, that the small hybrid is, is a slot cover guy who can blitz and do the like, – but is more like a Marcus Williams and Lathan Ransom type, right, that – we had sort of talked about Ronnie Hickman as a hybrid. Ronnie Hickman, in the end, just became a safety, right? Or a bigger hybrid who then can cover, but then when you're playing a team that plays two tight ends, he can be in the box and is more like a linebacker. So it's just two safeties, two outside corners, two backers, and that safety who's hybridable. But I think you lump all those bullets and safeties in one room together and think about them the same way. Because, again, it's like if you need – what, 11 or 12 of those guys now? 11 or 12 safeties because you have three starting spots there. And you need eight linebackers because you have two starting spots there, right? So I, you, you can see how this math kind of works. It was one position in particular. I was looking around kind of the country this year. You, you saw it with, I thought, JoJo Doman at Nebraska. You're seeing it in a lot of teams more. And there was uh, the guy who's like the highest rated, his name is escaping me right now, the highest rated of the three DBs in Georgia's class. They describe him like, well, is he uh, a, a slot corner? Or like, a, or like a box safety, or is he an outside linebacker? And I'm trying to think, like, when was the last time Ohio State had somebody with, like, that 
width of potential responsibilities. And yeah, it could be Sonny Styles here coming in a few years, or it could be somebody that they already have on this um, on this roster that they look at as being that versatile. But that's maybe one of the last leaps of thinking that um, Ohio State would need to get to in, in terms of sort of adapting to what we're saying, that like this has been going on in college football already, and they're just sort of um, joining up uh, here as we go. Can I, can I just say one, one more thing about the numbers, and we'll talk about this more on the podcast. I got like really excited about the numbers. It kind of, it sort of though, in the end, you have 85 roster spots and you have 22 starting spots. It's just kind of like you need four guys at every spot. So if you have two outside corners, you need eight corners. If you have two linebackers, you need eight linebackers. If you have five starting offensive linemen, you need, yeah. you know, not quite, you know what I mean? Like it's, it, it, like but, basically. yeah, but it's almost like, well, we want almost like we want a senior, a junior, a sophomore, and a freshman like at every spot on the field. And if you do that, that's 88. So it's not quite that, but as much as I was excited to get the numbers break down, it's like, eh, it's kind of common sense too. 